You thought after yesterday's news that the Baltimore Ravens were set up nice with this whole safety situation? Well, after today, things got that much better. And I'm going to tell you exactly how before we get into it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications all the way on because I don't want you to miss a single video. And also, click the thumbs up button. Leave a like on the video. Y'all have been going absolutely insane with that, and I appreciate it like crazy. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate y'all sharing your input and sharing your comments about whatever it is that we talk about every single day. But let's go ahead and get into it. So, yesterday, of course, it was announced that the Tennessee Titans, they signed former Jets and former Seahawks. Uh, safety slash linebacker Jamal Adams now why that was significant to the Baltimore Ravens because they had brought him in for a visit a couple of months ago now it was a lot of us Ravens fans who we were interested in the possibility but we would prefer that they went in another direction at the safety position so when the Titans signed him it was like yes it's a relief the Baltimore Ravens can still do something at the safety position that we want them to do but yesterday I questioned I was like hmm they signed in Jamal Adams and this is really good for the Ravens but Something else that could be even better for them is when we find out the salary details of Jamal Adams' contract. Exactly what is he getting paid? Because, especially depending on what this number is, I didn't expect it to be anything too big, but depending on what the number is, this could really help the Ravens out a whole lot. And when we look at these contract details, yeah. Thank you, Titans, again. Hashtag thank you, Titans. We appreciate y'all a lot. Anyway, this report came from My Sports Update. It says, Jamal Adams' deal with the Titans is a one-year veteran salary benefit contract uh, worth 1.125 mil guaranteed. So he only got a little bit over 1.1 mil guaranteed. That's, it's a one-year deal. That's a one-year deal. One, a little bit over 1.1 mil of guaranteed money. So money that he is going to be getting paid no matter what happens, no matter what his stats are, no matter how many sacks he gets, no matter how many picks he gets, no matter how much his playtime percentage is, no matter what, he's getting paid a little bit over 1.1 mil. That's it. Now, I'm sure more of the, the escalators, the incentives likely to be earned, incentives not likely to be earned, I'm sure those will come out later. But the bottom line, this is a one-year deal with a base of one, a little bit over 1.1 mil. That's it. Uh, and it says it's a low-risk, potentially high-reward move by Tennessee who will be getting a rejuvenated Adams. You should put a hopefully rejuvenated Adams. But I hope he does do well over there. So, I say all that to say this, Baltimore Ravens could look at this, and they could approach Justin Simmons, who a lot of us are hoping that they do approach, hopefully he's the guy, but they could approach Justin Simmons, and be like, look, and this could work in a couple of different ways, they could be like, look, hey, training camp is around the corner, I know you want to get on with a team, and as a Broncos fan in the comment section did tell me yesterday, Justin Simmons probably ain't looking to be no backups at safety. He's probably looking to be a starter. And I was thinking, well, well that, that is very true. That's an excellent, excellent point. But with the Baltimore Ravens, while we have talked about him being that third safety, as you all know, the Baltimore Ravens ran a lot, a whole lot of three safety sets. And you think about it, um, Justin Simmons, he would be roaming the backfield a lot. Because you got a Marcus Williams and you got a Justin Simmons, but with Kyle Hamilton, you move him around and you have him doing so many different things and you don't want to fix what's not broken like we keep on saying. So Justin Simmons is going to be on the field a lot, a whole lot. So he would pretty much be a starter, but maybe he may be looking to go to a team where that pretty much is taken out of that sentence to where he is an actual full-time starter. But with the Baltimore Ravens, he would be out there a whole lot. His jersey ain't going to be getting dusty. It ain't going to be getting dry. It's going to be getting a lot of action. So, But with Justin Simmons, the Baltimore Ravens could approach him and be like, look, this is what the market is right now. A little bit over 1.1 mil guarantee. They could, they could even tell him, you know what? We'll double that. We'll double that number. We'll give you 2.2 mil guaranteed. Like, cause if we sign you at a time like now, like, hey, can't be that many teams biting for whatever. Again, it's the weirdest, one of the weirdest stories in the NFL right now. Why he remains unsigned, I don't know what it is. I got to feel like this is coming from his side, though. I got to feel like it's on him why he's not signed right now. Because I'm sure there got to be plenty of teams that would love to have a Justin Simmons on their roster. So I got to feel like it, it may be him and his camp turning down invites, turning down deals, turning down offers. Because it just don't make no sense. How is somebody that's that good, a free agent, been a free agent for months, since March, 
March, April, May, June, July. Been a free agent for four months. And he's still there. We ain't heard about no visit. We ain't heard about no phone call. We ain't heard about nothing with Justin Simmons. It is the craziest thing. But hopefully we do. Hopefully we do hear about it. I know one of my guys in the comment section yesterday, he was like, oh, well, I'm getting ready uh, to, to prepare myself for when you make that, oh, the Baltimore Ravens almost signed Justin Simmons video. And I told him, hey, hopefully we don't even have to talk about that. Hopefully that ain't even a conversation. But then somebody else made a good point, too. They said, hey, when it comes to defensive players, Oh, the Ravens, they usually get their guys. But it's with the offensive players where they end up falling short. But another conversation for another day. But the Baltimore Ravens, they could approach him with that number and say, look, we can do that. We can wait it out. If you want to still wait it out, we can wait it out. But the clock is ticking. Training camp is around the corner. You want to get acclimated with our guys ASAP. Now, whether that's about Justin Simmons or if they – maybe they got another safety in mind because they got some options. Again, Justin Simmons is my top choice. There's a lot of our top choices – but Ravens got some options, and they that, that works in their favor, too. It really does. They say, look, you, it's a lot of teams. They got their safety situation all set up, and we, too, we got our safety situation set up, too. We can roll with the young boy, Ardarius, but we really want you to have a shot at this. Our team is already good, but you can make us that much better. And, again, with the salary, oh, you don't want 1.1 mil? Okay. We'll give you 2.1 mil. We may even give you 3.1 mil. Uh, right now at this point, I don't, I don't even know if they would give him that much. But, again, when you compare it to this deal that Jamal Adams got, Justin Simmons could be like, I ain't no Jamal Adams. I'm, I'm better than him. You're going to have to pay me some more money than that. Ravens right? could be like, okay, that, that ain't nothing. Well, for them, it is something. But they could be like, that, that, ain't, that ain't too bad. So we'll, we'll, we'll raise it up. But this makes things that much sweeter for them, and that gives them even more just control. So hopefully the Baltimore Ravens will use that control. They will take that control and use it to sign Justin Simmons or whatever other safety it may be. Maybe Micah Hyde, but again, y'all know who our first preference is. Now this question came from my guy, BB. Let's get into it. He said, what's up, Engraven? Look, if the Ravens don't sign Simmons, do you think Micah Hyde would be a good fit? Again, yes, I do. I do. Justin Simmons, again, he is at the top, tippity top of my list. Micah Hyde is a number two. Uh, he said, also, with the continuous injury, plague secondary, Marlon Humphrey every season, do you think Xavier Howard could make an impact or is he washed? Oh, best ability is availability. Marlon Humphrey, yeah, he's been going through some injury woes. Uh, certainly last year was rough. The year before, I think he was straight. The year before, he had an injury. So it's been off and on. Um, but we hope that Marlon Humphrey is healthy. Xavier Howard is somebody, he's dealt with a lot of injuries too. So it's almost like if the Baltimore Ravens had signed somebody like him, it's like they could cancel out each other. They could almost combine and be one player and cancel out each other. But Marlon Humphrey is the better corner in my opinion. Uh, they're just different. Xavier Howard, more of the interceptor, the, the ball hog kind of corner. Uh, he's more Marcus Peters type in my opinion. Marlon Humphrey, the more physical corner, better tackler, whatnot, more just pressing corner. Uh, he ain't going to be getting a bunch of picks. Y'all y'all already know that. Um, but, yeah, Xavier Howard, he deals with a lot of injuries, too. Uh, and he said, uh, truthfully, I wish Ravens would have added Donovan Smith or even reunite with Tyree Phillips. But I don't see that happening. <laughs> anyway, because anyway, he said, uh, depth is imperative for a deep run in the playoffs leading to the Super Bowl Ravens. Will win this year. Okay, your thoughts. Depth is is extremely important. That's why I consider last year a failure. Again, I know people disagree, and that's fine. I respect it. I respect everybody's opinion. I don't always agree with everybody's opinion. And just like you don't always agree with mine, and that's fine. As long as we got respect for each other, that's all that matters at the end of the day. But last year was a failure because everything that you're talking about, everything happened. But the Baltimore Ravens had quality depth to overcome it. At the beginning, you talked about Marlon Humphrey being hurt. He was hurt a lot last year. Baltimore Ravens were more than good enough to overcome Marlon Humphrey's injury. Then you talked about uh, the Baltimore Ravens, their offensive line. Their offensive line was good enough to win the Super Bowl last year. They failed. They came up short. Uh, then you talked about how depth is imperative for a deep run in the playoffs. They had so much quality depth at so many different positions, and they failed. As always, we got to give a special shout out to our Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to, as long as you continue to leave a like on the video, to click that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel, have the notifications on. 
then you good in my book. Now, uh, speaking of book, ooh, <laughs> my guy Derek, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron, he had a lot to say. Let's see what he got to say. He said, hey, Engraving, what's going on, my brother? Good afternoon on this Friday. Hope all is well, Engraving, with you and the family. I pray that you and your family are safe in every aspect of life, man. Driving, please be careful. Uh, these folks are reckless out here. Boy, you ain't lying. You ain't lying at all. And, and people just nowadays, everybody just walking around so angry, so hot headed, just looking for problems and whatnot, looking for a reason to be mad. It's just crazy, man. But I, I appreciate you like crazy, man. So thank you for this. He like said, going to the grocery store, shopping, jogging, etc. Just please be safe, man. You are like extended family to us all. No, yeah, we all family, man. We all family for sure, man. I appreciate you, man. He said, anyone who let me jump to two things. Okay. Uh, he said, number one, I know we're past this, but do you think the reason why the Ravens held on to Wink and g for four years was just to avoid paying these two positions and in favor for the other two I'm about to mention? Pass rushers such as Judon and Yannick Ngakwe were not happy in Wink's system. They felt whenever they were getting into a rhythm and getting warmed up to get after the quarterback, they were tasked to do something else. Hmm. Corners and DBs, including safeties, however, thrived in System. Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peter, Jimmy Smith, Eric Weddle, Chuck Clark, uh, Tony Jefferson, and even the infamous Earl Thomas did as the 2019 season went on. <laughs> I was just watching some old videos uh, about Earl Thomas, and woo, that was just crazy, man. Um, could they have kept those coordinators in order to not pay those positions because those coordinators? Uh, specifically talking about Wink right now before you get to Giro because he uh, did not allow pass rushers to thrive in his system. I don't know. I would hope not because I feel like that would be counterproductive um, because at the same time, it's like, all right, you don't want to pay pass rushers, but corners thrive, so you got to pay corners. So you got to pay somebody. So I, I no, I, I would say no. Uh, then he said, now for Giro, we all know that what position hated working with him, cough, cough. Why cough cough receiver however the other pass catching position loved him that's tight end long story short do you think they kept those two just to avoid paying wide receivers and pass rushers uh no because when you think about it this been an issue before Giro. uh we know the todd heaps we know the shannon sharps we know the dennis pitters we know the ed dixons um my point is we know those guys and those are all tight ends and tight ends thrived with the baltimore ravens way before g roll was even a thought and wide receivers have struggled with the baltimore ravens way before g roll put on that purple jersey uh, well not jersey but that purple collar shirt with the raven on it, the raven logo on there so no we cannot blame greg roman or wink for those issues um uh, and he also said last question <laughs> what a way to end it off he said do you think the justin simmons situation will end up being similar to how jadavian Clowney ended up here on the ravens oh it all depends because y'all know jadavian Clowney. that was my guy y'all know that was one of my favorite players what is one of my favorite players in the nfl um with jadavian Clowney, i had wanted him to be a baltimore raven for years for years and i was just watching old videos on that too i wanted the ravens to get this guy for years i remember when he would be a free agent i would hope the ravens would sign him then he would go sign with somebody else this will happen a couple different times so that's when last year when the baltimore ravens finally signed him i was so 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 happy um now with justin simmons he's not somebody that i have wanted for years because i just didn't think it would happen that's why when he got cut from the broncos this offseason i was just shocked and I was, initially when he first got cut, I was like, oh, yeah, that would be nice for the Ravens to have him. But I just knew it wasn't going to happen because it wasn't realistic. One of the best safeties in the league, a playmaking safety at that, too. So, yeah, somebody else going to sign him. But here we are four months later and he's still available. So anything could happen. 